All right, so you're gonna track your car or you've been tracking your car and you wanna put it back on the street. Uh, your car comes with these cooling rings, which get installed right here around behind the rotor. So in order to put those on before a track session and to take them off after a track session and put the little uh, splash guard that goes down at the bottom back on, which is what the car comes with stock, you got to remove the caliper, you got to remove the rotor, and you get to the three bolts that hold this in, that comes off, and then two of those bolt holes down here, one on the knuckle and one up on the arm, um, gets, uh, gets attached with the little splash plate. So very straightforward process, not a lot to it. Uh, first thing I did, and I'm doing another video to show people how to change the brakes, so I removed uh, the old pads, or actually my track pads because I'm putting in regular pads. So the first thing you're gonna do is back here, behind, turn the wheel here. Going to remove that bolt, and that bolt, those two bolts hold, you can see here, hold the caliper on there and there. So the caliper will come off. When the caliper comes off, we'll take it and we'll set it up on top here on the wishbone. Then you're gonna remove with a little teeny Torx head this, the rotor will come off, and then you can see your attachment points. There's one. Then there's a second one over here and a third one down here. So I'm going to stop the video. These are a bit of a bear. The torque spec on those is 162 pound feet. So they take a bit of work. I'll stop the camera. All right, so we got the caliper detached. I stopped my video early because I don't know how to run my phone. Uh, this is simple, little teeny, what is this, a Torx? Torx 30, little, little baby Torx. This kind of a funky feature ensures that the rotors are held in place. So we'll get this bad boy off. It's very hard to keep things in frame and do this with one hand. So this comes right out and then when this is off, the rotor will come right off the hub, which I'm not going to try to do with one hand because I'll drop it. So there's what your hub looks like when the rotor's off. Easy peasy. That's the little hole that the, uh, the screw that we pulled out of the face of the rotor goes into. So all you got to make sure is when you put the rotor back on, you line up that hole with the hole in the rotor. So you can see the cooling ring here. There's one, two, three bolts. The L indicates this is the left side, the one from the other side, the R indicates it's the right side. <clears throat> Very funny how that works. And then these are the pieces that came off. This one will say LH, the one on the other side says RH, and you can see how much smaller these are. So this is going to mount right like that. Much smaller. Um, so the point of this is you can actually see when you've installed the race ducting under the car, there's actually a, a small, all right, let's try this again. YouTube expert I am not. So there's actually a small duct that's under the car. So this is the front. These little scoops stick down here. And this duct, which comes with those cooling rings, goes up over around the suspension and dumps out here. So the idea is, as this air is blowing out here under speed, this cooling ring, curves back, you can see the curve. The air gets held back in here and it's supposed to expedite cooling of the, the rotor. Um, it does a pretty good job, I guess, because I don't know, people say it does, so it must, right? Everything on the internet's fact. So to take this off, you're going to remove these. Now, if you're watching this video because you want to install your cooling rings, uh, you're literally gonna do the opposite of what I'm doing. You would get to this point this thing will be on here, like that. You take the two bolts off on this, you put the cooling ring on, and it should look like this when you're done. Uh, the installation of 
these plastic ducts that go through the wishbone and then down to the little scoop underneath. Those you do once, they stay on for good. Uh, if you can, if you're worried, or if you're worried, you don't have to, not if you can. Um, I have heard of some guys that will block these off when they are not on the track so they don't shoot road debris and crap up into their rotors. Um, I'm not so sure you really need to, but I guess that's kind of your own thing. There's also the dump here uh, that's going to blow in. So this is going to be blowing in from the front of the car. And again, that's getting caught by this cooling ring. So they did a really, GM did a really good job on these cars with just adding this ring and really sort of capturing all that air. Um, but it still is going to be blowing a lot of stuff onto the back of the brakes without the ring. So I guess it depends on how aggressive you think you need your brake cooling when you're on the track. This is a how-to video I should show you how to. 10 millimeter socket goes on lefty loosey. That's how to do this three times. So that's what it looks like with this back on. Now you notice my caliper is down here. I have a bolt sort of just a couple threads in. So I'm having a hard time getting it to balance up on top where I had it on the driver's side. It has to do with just sort of the shape of the hose here versus the passenger side. So the key is you want to make sure the caliper doesn't drop. Normally what I'll do is I'll have a bungee handy, which I did not in my pile of tools here, uh, to wrap over the top of the wishbone, put the little hooks for the bungee through here, and just let the caliper sort of hang back on this side. Um, so didn't have that. I'm going to go get the bungee now to hang it to put the rotor back on. But just two 10 millimeters, hold this on, and uh, you're good to go. This is the, the default um, plate that comes on the car. So again, if you were going to be putting the cooling rings on, this is what you would start with right here. You can already hear it. Somebody's going to be like, what do you mean you use a bungee? I don't know what you mean. Just goes over the top, hangs down, shove them in the hole. The whole key here is you don't want this hose to have any real tension on it. You don't want to kink it. You don't want to bend it. You don't want to pull on it because, you know, brake hoses, lives matter. So let's talk about reinstalling the rotor here for a second. If you've got your rotor up, it's a great time to inspect it. So again, this hole is where we're going to line it up. And if you look at the rotor, there are big holes where the lugs go through. And then there is a small hole that has a tapered edge to it. If you try to use this hole for a lug bolt, um, something's wrong with you in the head. And you probably should not be doing this to your car. This is where the little router or uh, rotor holding bolt goes with that Torx head. Uh, so like I said, since we've got the rotors off, it's a great time to inspect them for cracks. So if you're at the track, you will find lots of little surface cracks like this. That is completely normal. The ones you want to start to watch for are those that are going to start to come out of any of these cut channels that are on your rotors. Um, if they're slotted, if you upgraded to uh, drilled rotors, um, or if your car came with drilled rotors because somebody else had done it, uh, you want to check those areas because these are where the stress fractures are going to begin. Um, so really though, this surface cracking, this type of stuff that you see, that's perfectly normal. It's acceptable. I mean, it means the rotor's got a little bit of age to it, but it's not, uh, it's not dying yet. Uh, a couple more track sessions and it'll probably be at end of life. But what you want to look for are large cracks that are coming from either these particular ends of like the little gas channels or any cracks that are along the edge. Uh, and the way most folks will sort of test for them is you run your fingernail over them. If you can feel them, you're, uh, you're probably due to replace that rotor. If you can't feel them, it's just sort of a, a surface defect and uh, you're, you're good to go. Just keep an eye on it. So these rotors have not had a whole lot of life uh, on the track, so they're they're fine. But it is kind of good so that you know like what things look like, you know. So you can you can if you look at your rotor and you're like, hey, look, I've got this little teeny crack here. Is it going to fall apart? Um, this gives you kind of a rule of thumb. These rotors are fine. They're they're going back on. They're good for another couple of track sessions. And like I said, I'm prepping the car now for street. So no, no concerns at all with a rotor in this shape on the street. So once you've got the, the rotor drawn in using this, uh, you do torque it to spec. Uh, and it is a whopping 89 inch pounds. 
Wow, man, this has got a lot to go. Look at this baby's going to free flow. So obviously that's not going to work. Uh, 89 inch pounds. Notice it's a quarter inch drive. So inch pounds, not foot pounds. So with that bad boy torqued on there, now we're going to come around back here and you're basically going to undo what you did earlier. If you got this far, I'm pretty confident you're going to be able to get to where you need to be. The two holes in the caliper, one here, one down under the arm there that you can't see. There it is. Those two knuckles are going to go top one there, bottom one there, and the bolts are going to come in from the back. You're going to reverse what you did. If you don't remember what you did and you don't know how to reverse it, I can't help you at this point. I really can't. I'd like to, but I can't. Okay, there's two things that I wish I didn't have to tell people, but I feel like I should because somebody's going to ask. One, yes, you remove the bungee cord. You're no longer using it. That does not stay on your car. And two, the brake caliper goes on this side. The bolt comes through this side. You know you've got it right when it's centered on the rotor. If you try to put that thing on that side, one, you're going to not have any way to thread the bolt in because the bolt will be threaded in here and not here. And two, it won't line up on here. And then you're going to be all sad because you can't take your car for a drive because you can't put the brakes back on. Bolts back here that hold the caliper onto the car. Two of them. 162 foot-pounds. That's a lot of torque. You're going to need a big-ass torque wrench for that.